Cancer, hello and welcome to your weekly reading for the week of October 27th through to the 3rd of November. So starting off, the week will begin at 4 degrees Scorpio and finish at 11 degrees Scorpio. So right away, it's giving that your inner world is being able to, it's starting to shift from where you belong with your sex, death, transformation, rebirth, but that's a fourth house matter for you. It comes up in the fourth house, how you feel. So Cancer, we all know that you guys have a lot of um, emotional adeptness as you're ruled by the moon. And the moon is constantly changing signs, forcing you guys to adapt to new people, places, and things. And I have the healing waters with us today to help with this reading, as well as the Mother Peace Tarot. So we have the sun, and the sun in Scorpio, I, I feel like it's a good time for you guys. I feel like you guys are able to um, really get clear on maybe which trend, especially this year, with Pluto in, in the sign of Capricorn, your seventh house of partnerships and relationships moving into your eighth house, whereas Scorpio naturally represents the eighth house. So you guys might come to find that certain relationships are able to open your heart. They're able to help you to heal. You're able to come into a new sense of serenity and safety within partnerships. Um, just looking at Monday, ruled by the moon, the moon will start out in Virgo. And I want to get very clear on exactly what degree. So at about 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon will be at 6 degrees Virgo. And then into Monday, ruled by the moon, we'll get at 18 degrees, really early, about 4.58 a.m. So from 18 degrees Virgo, there's a need to act on um, the details, on the feeling of integrity. And at the end of the week, as the sun will hit 11 degrees Scorpio, it's sort of giving what you value to the nth degree. Because with Linda Goodman's work, um, the earth is ruled by the number one. And Virgo is ruled by the number 11 with Sensei Christopher Wateki's work. And while, yes, we can also look at Chiron, something else he teaches, I feel that we could just look at what you value. And that can make things clear. Yeah, bingo. You want to have a very clear goal and target emotionally for yourself. So let's see what the healing waters have to say before I pull a third card from Mother Peace. The Water Oracle, Psychic Abilities, Acting on Visions, It's Destined. So I would say when you have a vision, when you have, um, even if it's just a desire, like a feeling that you'd want to attain, it's really the season for you guys to double down on it, for your emotional fortitude, for you guys to come off as really stable and sturdy in romantic and creative projects and connections, you have to have a very clear vision of where things are going. And we cannot default anymore to what happened last time when we got clear on our vision, when we were able to see something and see it very clearly. We had a lot of abundance, but there was maybe a lingering fear or anxiety that hadn't been resolved. As you see, this woman's laying on a, a small mat and her baby's just kind of bare on the earth. Um, she's kind of got everything behind her and maybe it's not really there. Maybe it's just a vision of what she wants to attain is a full harvest and she wants to have a baby and she wants to have this beacon of truth, the parrot over her shoulder, letting her know, yes, this is coming for you. So let's see what the priestess of discs has to say. Yeah, priestess is already telling me that it's like a divine commandment. It's a divine order as well as the son of disc. So maybe you're joined with someone romantically who shares this vision with you. And it's more important now than ever to just be clear on how you're feeling, what you're going through, how you're processing your emotions, your time, any previous wounding that you're really ready to come out of the woods with. So the son of discs is saying, focus, determination, hypnotism, lightness, and penetration. In the sign of Scorpio okay and then the priestess of disc is saying water and earth the Sun is air and earth so being in the body yoga inner sight fertile spark and security and if you're longing for those things it's just a matter of holding the vision holding the vision and taking steps towards it you know in the way that we do research if you're wanting to um, become more fertile there are ways to 
to heal and cleanse the body. A lot of what my husband practices is abstaining from food to actually heal the system. And it's interesting because as I've done my research, um, I believe that it's, I have to look him up now. He has the True North Health Center in California, and he was on a Rich Roll podcast. So it's interesting that, I just don't want to call him the wrong name, but I think his name is like Dr. Goldwater. Health Center, okay. But he essentially hosts and facil Dr. Goldhammer. He facilitates up to 40 days of water fasting where people come to him when they're like really ready for it, but they often have all sorts of ailments from cancer to like, you know, the stage four illness and they come out healed because when your body is only running on the essential water, not food, and some people do think that they'll die without a meal. He says in the interview, flying from New York to California, which isn't true. Um, your body is able to release toxins that it's kind of, it's backlogged and it's so focused on digesting what you're putting in every few hours that it doesn't have time to take care of the like the outdated process stuff. So if you guys compost and you know how it is if you leave a lot of compost and it starts to rot, it comes to life and then it has its own processes versus the initial process of us, the human, putting something that's ready to decompose into a container. That container takes on a life of its own, so why wouldn't food do that? And if anyone's looking to come into fertility, we have gratitude. Oh, gratitude 35. It's just saying to maybe add that to your gratitude rituals around food to really be present with it, no matter what you're eating, no matter if you abstain from food or not. But that could be some, some level of helping your system to adequately measure what you need and to change your patterns of um, taste and you know if you have a salt heavy diet maybe practicing gratitude and doing things like adding seaweed which is that extra um, gosh the body needs um, some mineral that it's it's like in a form of salt but essentially you guys can start to modify how you get various nutrients and then practice gratitude around what you have and you know there's anything from that 10 items a day gratitude list to like writing out a full list of every single compliment that you ever received from people. And that kind of changes up your energy in a way that really allows for you to move in ways that, you know, make your life more sacred. There are some times where I practice abundance rituals, taking a shower and like every single drop of water, if it was like a diamond or gold, it's like I am so wealthy and it's like, completely one of those experiences where you're immersed in it so there are plenty of ways to play with gratitude and abundance to bring it in and it's a matter of doing it consistently to where you start to see it right away and the more we acknowledge it the more it comes and that's with everything so if you guys are in a state of constantly acknowledging people who hurt you or people who you loved and trusted and they broke your heart you're going to continue to see it it's going to continue to show itself to you so that you can decide to focus on something else. So the moon on moon day, that's in your third house of communication and Mars is at 27 degrees at the start of the day. Um, we will have a sextile with Neptune at 27 degrees. So this is a very important day to get out that yoga mat, do a vinyasa flow, um, just lay in Shavasana and practice a yoga nidra. Denise Fishman is my go-to person. She's on YouTube and she's amazing. Um, we're also going to have a, so that's a sextile, a trine I meant, I, a trine between Neptune and Mars, but there's a sextile between Uranus and Mars. So there might be some like funky energy that you haven't learned to properly manage. Maybe it's emotional energy, energy in motion that you haven't really learned to just say, hey, in your social groups, because that is in your 11th house to where you're going to be able to say, hey, um, this is something that brings me down. You know, if someone starts complaining about their life, I have a, a friend who she, I found her through her blog, Purple Palace on YouTube, and she spoke to... Um, just more gratitude in her life because she said hanging out with French people, it's very common to complain and to get on that, you know, like train and really focusing on what you have and what you've built is important because there might be some projects that 
you know, you kept trying to take it one way, but that way was too, um, what's the word? It was like too righteous. You were trying to be so righteous and you were trying to be like, I know better than everyone. And it's like, no, you don't. We're all um, on earth school, same level, whether you're a newborn or you are 85 years old, we are all going through right now the photon belt ast astronomically and it's forcing us to see our mirrored image and to really see what our magnetic field is bringing in of our heart. So if you're not satisfied or content with what you're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis, it's time to weed out the familiar suspects, the people who you speak to the most, the five people cancer who you surround yourself with the most. Start gratitude rituals for those people and maybe like if you guys usually hang out and you go for you know a walk or you go out for a drink or something you could start it off with like a tea at your house and then just take time to like really catch up and then you go into a setting where you've already established a parameter of your emotional experience with this person you sat down in a moment of quiet and we have la a mao mao and this is speaking to wind, so it's speaking to that Sun of Discs. And if we look at the Sun of Discs in a way that, this reading is surprising me every card, I'm like, huh, okay, cool. But if the, the slightest breeze were to throw off, if that bird were to fly in front of his arrow, that wouldn't be good, because he's just aiming for a target, and it doesn't look like he's a hunting guy. He looks like he's all dressed up in his forest clothing. There's a dragonfly right above his head, maybe letting him know how to transform his target, how to transform his way of seeing, and then the kite, which is a very different experience because it's like we need to have the um, ability to maybe think outside of our usual parameters, maybe outside of what we normally expect from people. So, you know, maybe you've wanted to have tea, a tea ritual with your friends for the longest time, but you're thinking like, oh, they're not going to be excited for this. And like, for the past month or so they've been researching where can I have a tea experience and it's like one of those things where this is a fifth house transit so we're entering how you treat yourself with your creative projects um, when you get a creative impetus to do something how do you manage your emotions within and then coming from Monday with that four degrees sun and then the moon in Virgo we're going to be able to examine how maybe you talk to yourself that inner dialogue and shifting it from a place of you know, maybe like, oh, this didn't work out the past few times to gratitude of, I'm so grateful this is going to work out. And you plant those seeds for things to harvest in the future. Um, with the Priestess of Discs, you see that she's got an abundant harvest, but we're not sure if that's her inner vision. Just making that something that she's able to bring into a manifestation of like, okay, well, if I want to have an abundant harvest, which seeds do I want to plant? Like physical seeds of like, one of them looks like a cannabis plant and one of them looks like corn. And it's like, if that's what she wants, that's all she has to attain. And with the sun being at the heart of your reading, like the, the initial card that we drew, with La Mao Mao, it's important to also remember that as the sun rises, it gets more windy. So we want to make sure that as maybe we have that midday, like, upswing of ideas, feelings, thoughts, everything kind of coming, we learn how to dial it in, come into ourselves, and maybe... You know, it's really easy to get caught up, like you go to a cafe and you start chatting with people and then you've blown your whole afternoon. That's happened to me a couple of times and I learned to set those boundaries for when I go out and I want to just receive the buzz of an energy versus being brought into it, which is not my intention if I'm like wanting to get something done at a cafe. It's like I need to get out of a familiar setting, the familiar suspects of, you know, hours go by at home and I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, I've been puttering around the house for like hours now and my goal was just an hour. So we have to properly reel in that kite of our thoughts, um, what we're used to doing, how we're used to receiving people and what we're willing to offer in our edge, our comfort zone, how we're willing to go to that and journey to it and understand the proper amount of energy to exert, just like with that arrow and with that inner vision the proper vision that you want to hold for yourself, especially with your inner dialogue. Okay, I'm going to read La Mao Mao, which is a 10. And then I want to see where the moon ends up at the end of the week. Ooh, Mercury enters Sagittarius. The moon in, is in Sagittarius and Venus is there. So for you guys, that is your sixth house of daily life. So this is speaking to that energy of the vision and holding it because come 
This is technically Monday, the 4th of November. We all know it's election day in the US. Um, and we can even take it back to Sunday. But you'll see Sag Mercury is at zero degrees Sagittarius and the moon is at 29 degrees Scorpio. So it's like setting an emotional tone for how you, how in your most um, self-valuing way you can conduct yourself in your creative projects, in creative groups, in your social sphere to manifest something that your heart is desiring. And let's see, Uranus does retrograde to 25 degrees um, Taurus, so things might take on a more spiritual sense on Sunday with your social groups and connections. Saturn retrogrades to 12 degrees. Um, the sun will be at 11 degrees Scorpio. Black Moon Lilith is on and chugging to 14 degrees Libra. South Node is at 4 degrees Libra and I'm, I'm really stoked for when the North and South Node enter Virgo and Pisces because the South Node in Virgo is going to clear out um, for you guys um, your ways of communicating maybe that were a little bit debilitating. They were too focused on the details. That there was too many things that mattered and you felt like you couldn't get your points across. But also with the North Node in Pisces, the age of Pisces agendas are going to start to just sort of dis dissipate. They're going to start to be washed away by the time. Okay. So la amal ma means distant sacredness. A Hawaiian word for atonement is kala hala. Kala means to loosen, untie, free, release, unburden, let go, and take off. Those who are able to successfully navigate to where they want to go know that they can only go so fast as the winds will take them. To attempt to go beyond natural limits may endanger yourself and others. Acknowledging your limitations prevents you from getting carried away. Allow for yourself to be gently guided towards your full potential. Okay, Cancer. Thank you guys so much for checking out this reading. Go ahead and look at your moon sign reading. I'm just going to emphasize that for the week ahead. It'll give you a better understanding of the energies working with and through us so that we don't get caught and ensnared in a previously held vision or previously stored emotional experiences to my subscribers thank you guys so much for being here go on and check out your sun moon and rising reading if not here on tiktok you can find me at jessica chloe astrology on tiktok and i give a one minute download and quick and easy for you guys to take in until next time cancer all of my aloha